Welcome to D-Lab everybody. On the bench today I have another Mojo Tone Deluxe Reverb Amplifier with noise issues. From the outside she looks beautiful but here on the inside it doesn't look so good. So first I will test the amp as is. We'll open it up and see what it needs. Let's go. Alright this is the initial power up of the Mojo Tone Deluxe. The owner told me it has already been to another shop a couple times they were trying to resolve the noise issue so they actually put in a different reverb driver tube to try to reduce the gain because he said with the amount of noise it was unusable okay so let's just bring up the reverb gain almost sounds like an open circuit doesn't it but that may just be because of the tube that they put in. Now I'm going to tap on the reverb tank. And as you know, a fender ramp it should go nuts, though, right? Now that reverb is pretty dead. It's pretty much all noise and no reverb. Alright, I've seen enough time to open her up. Alright, you guys are seeing this as I see this. Pull off the chassis. Take a look at what's going on. And there she is. It's actually pretty clean. Nice work on the eyelet board, but the first thing I spotted was all these ground runners. I mean, there's grounds coming from all directions, and look, they end up here. <laughs> a big uh, star ground, okay? I've heard about the star grounds. You know, Fender never used them. All right, let's give this thing a good inspection and see what else is going on. So let's pop our little tube shields and see what we got going, especially on the reverb. So these two guys, I wonder about what are they, right? He said he changed them out with something else. Well, that's an ECC 83. And that is a 12 AT7. Hmm. Well, maybe he put the original type tubes back in it before he shipped it to me. Okay. Anyway, she runs a pair of 6V6s, JJs, and you have your GZ34. That all looks stock. Alright, so I wouldn't say the problem's up here. We're going to have to go below to give that chassis a good inspection. Alright, I'm going to slowly pan through the chassis so we can see everything that's been going on. I know that they've been struggling with noise. You can see up here in the reverb circuit there appears to be an additional ground runner and also maybe some additional resistors that don't belong there. Okay. The soldering on the eyelet board looks great. The guy did a super job. I just think that they got caught up in trying to solve this ground issue and maybe it's a good idea to have somebody take a second look. So here is the old star ground and uh, yeah there's a lot of ground runners there man they're going, they're going everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, got uh, some abandoned taps, I guess, from the power transformer. Crimp on connector on the ground of the power cord. And of course, my favorite thing all the grounds that go to the back of the pots. And another string of ground runners going that away. So, you know, as usual, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to remove all the grounds. I want to retract all the pots and put in my little brass ground plate. And then we're going to return all the grounds in the power supply section back to stock like Fender did it. And we will reevaluate our noise floor at that point. But there's no reason for me to troubleshoot it and deal with this because that's not normal. I want to get it back to some fashion of something I recognize. Alright, I got all the pots loose. 
I'm getting ready to retract them and install my little brass ground plate. This is 10 thousandths shim stock. I just bend it. It's going to go behind there just like Fender did. One disclaimer, guys, this is not what Mojo specified to do. The star ground is something that you read about online. Somebody attempted it as a fix, but this is not what Mojo specifies, okay? All right, let's get the plate in. I'm getting close here. One thing I really do like about these kits is Mojo Tone put in top quality CTS pots. That was quite the investment in itself. They got Switchcraft jacks. Okay, this is all good stuff. There's just one missing piece, and that is proper ground bonding. Okay, so that is why Fender did this. Okay, they struggled with this problem, and they came up with this solution, and it works. So you put the plate in, and your preamp grounds go to the plate. Your power supply grounds end up over here. Okay which separates that current from this current and that reduced the noise level alright so I want to ask you guys a question because a lot of people call me out on this I'm just going to leave it up to you okay so you're grounding to the back of your pots like this right with a ground runner let's look at the other side of the pot this dust cover is held on by four bent over tabs okay and yes, there is a lock washer that goes on this brass shaft to the chassis. So let me ask you though, is that a good ground bonding system to the chassis? Alright, here's an update on the Deluxe. I removed that star grounding system. So I got quite a few little wire runners hanging out that will have to be re-terminated to ground. I have a terminal board installed which is soldered to the chassis that will handle the power transformer center tap grounding and the filament wire supply. I've got the brass plate installed to handle all of the eyelet board grounds. So my next step will be to clean things up, swing all these long grounds right down to that brass plate, terminate the power supply grounds, get the filament wiring hooked up and we'll be ready to test. All right, let me give you a little guided tour of the things that I did to correct the noise levels and also bring this amp closer to a stock fender configuration. First off, an AC outlet was added to the rear. This is the stock Amphenol two-prong style that they used back in the day. Customer asked to have that added. Line cord comes in, and if you remember before, there was a crimp on ring connector going under this lug of the power transformer that now is soldered direct to the chassis added this terminal board it has a couple purposes one is the filament lines come in and they land here and you've got your 100 ohm resistors for balancing Okay. then the high current takes off over to the tubes then I simply use 20 gauge wire that feeds the dial lamp also on that terminal board there's a pair of 1 ohm resistors. These are for measuring current to the output tube, so these black wires go to pin 8 of each of the 6V6s. So then adjusting bias is a breeze. Also, this center tap of the transformer is going to this ground lug of the terminal board, which is soldered to the chassis. Also installed the famous Fender brass plate as a ground plane. This is a proven method to clean up noise on your amps. So I always install these if they're missing and people are obviously having hum issues. Okay. I also took the 68K resistors, put them back up on the input jacks where they belong, and then I came off of those with RG174 coax, which feeds the inputs of the 12AX7s. Looking at the amp, at a different angle you can see all those ground runners that used to fly over here to that star ground system are gone okay so now this front brass plate does its job as a ground plane but more importantly 
the power supply filter cap grounds are separated the way that Fender intended them to be. So initially when you had all these ground runners going over to that star system, the preamp ground and the power ground were both going to the same spot. Fender deliberately took the main filter cap ground and they came over here to a chassis point near the power supply and then they took their preamp ground they came out right down there and that went here to this plate. If you tie those two together you'll have all kinds of hum issues. Okay, So that's why Fender did this guys. Keep your preamp ground over here. Keep your power supply ground over here. So here's the deluxe reverb fired up. Just sitting here idling on the bench. I've got my go-to speaker system hooked up to it, just listening for the noise level. When this thing came into the shop, I would turn it on, there would be a lot of hum with nothing applied. And now she's pretty dead quiet, so I'm pretty sure all the issues have been resolved. But of course the best way is to get Tony Cusimano over here to shake it down. So we'll do that next. <laughs> many grounds now I pulled out that star ground system and put in the standard fender brass plate and seems to have just made this a world is, of difference man this is one of the best kit amps we've had in here this amp sounds really good uh, I think it has something to do with it. this amp I think has higher quality capacitors in it yep yep I Springs. think it has a lot to do with how come this the stamp sounds really nice. It's got a nice fat warm tone. Reverb sounds really clean too. Mojo Tone Deluxe Reverb Amp. Tell you guys the truth with the level of hum that it came into the shop with, 
I was kind of skeptical of whether rerouting grounds and putting in that brass plate would do the trick, and it did. And Tony Kuzmano told me this is the best sounding Mojo kit amp that's came through the shop, and I agree. So that tells me that if you have problems with these amps, it's not the kit. It's just technique, okay? So get online and study some of those photographs, look at the old Fender layout diagrams, and when you build it, make sure it looks like that, and then it's going to play as good as this one.